Hey, what's going on guys? My name is CarQ and you know, anything to do with tips versus every hero keeps my channel relevant. It's no secret. So here we go again. This time it's gonna be one ultimate mistake for every hero, starting with D.Va. A vertical bomb can be a powerful tool to force enemies to retreat out of line of sight. However, a big mistake a lot of players make is to simply use booster jet, then immediately bomb. The result of this is a bomb that takes too much time traveling upwards, meaning it detonates way too high to have it do any meaningful damage. The better alternative is to use up some of the vertical momentum during boosters before ulting, giving the bomb more time to drop and explode at a better height. For Orisa, I can't believe this is happening, but for the love of Jeff Kaplan, protect your supercharger. Players often make the mistake of throwing down supercharger without putting it behind a barrier or a wall. That thing is pure value. Every player getting 50% damage increase is nothing to scoff at, so protect it, body block it if you have to, if it's being threatened. A big mistake for Rhines after they earth shatter is immediately using their charge. Now there are certainly situations where it's needed, such as shattering a lone tank near the end of its range, but if you land a fatty shatty, you'll get a lot more damage done by just swinging away at the bodies, then maybe at the end of the stun you can go for a cheeky pin if a tank is still alive. For Roadhog's whole hog, a mistake players make is simply using it without giving much thought to it. Remember, you move slower and you can't use your self heal, so make sure you're in a position to actually live through it or not have it cancelled. When Sigma uses Flux, a common mistake is that players will start flying towards the targets they lifted up and end up dying from those enemies firing back. That's why you need to be mindful of where you are and remember that his orbs have a very long range. A bonus tip to help alleviate this mistake is to actually pre-shield a little bit in the air and fly behind it. When you get real angry as Winston, players often just leap into enemy backlines and smack people around, displacing them all. Sure there are situations where it's appropriate to just go ape shit, but when former Defiant tank Yakpung was teaching me about Primal Rage juggling, which you can watch, he recommended to focus down a single target and confirm a kill yourself rather than moving everyone around and relying on your team to follow up, especially in solo queue. It'll often do more harm than good unless your team is organized and prepared for it. A lot of Wrecking Ball players go for a high grapple, drop their minds, then pile drive. When Wrecking Ball pile drives, he gets a little boost forward, so this combo is not actually a mistake per se, as there are times where it's appropriate depending on where the enemy is. However, the improved combo is to 180 turn before pile driving, making use of that forward momentum to therefore pull more enemies into the center of the minefield, giving them a lower chance of survival. Ah, uh, Zarya. I have a feeling you guys know exactly what the common mistake with Graviton Surge is. It's echoed in every Zarya guide and educational Reddit post out there. That's right, stop holding on to Grav for the perfect situation, where you're looking to get 4, 5, or 6 man alt. Sometimes those situations never come, and you're gonna end up holding your alt until Overwatch 2. At the end of the day, the most important thing is that you win the team fight, right? And sometimes just getting two people or even solo grabbing can be enough. Just look at the Overwatch League, they do it all the time. With Ash, the ultimate consists of just calling Bob down, so there needs to be a lot more thought put into it. A common mistake is just blindly calling it down, but think about his positioning and line of sight. Consider the area it denies and which way it could force enemies to walk towards so it zones them out. With Bastion, the common mistake with his ultimate is not utilizing Rocket Jump. It's actually such a fundamental mechanic to learn in order to get a top-down angle because if you're shooting from flat ground or lower, you have to rely on direct. Rocket Jumping gives you an easier shot and allows you to continue getting splash damage if you somewhat miss, whereas enemies on level ground or lower would be a complete whiff. For Doomfist, going for solo targets when they have an escape ability is a common mistake because there's no guarantee on the kill. If you're in a pinch, you either want to escape entirely or land on at least two people to maximize his passive shield gains since he gets a boosted 75 shields per target instead of 30, up to a maximum of 150, which is something people often overlook or forget. For Genji, the recipe for a disastrous blade is whipping it out with no plan calculated in your head. You've got to know what stuns they have, defensive vault, and relative positioning so you know if you're in range to dash to them. Too many times I'll see a Genji dash in the air for the blade, then go, oh sh**, who do I go for? This guy here? No, wait, he's out of range. F this hero, I'm just gonna play Torb. 
and leave voice chat. With Hanzo, his Dragon Strike takes a little while to fire out after he casts it. So without comboing it with anything, aiming it directly at enemies is often very predictable and allows them to simply walk out of range. An unpredictable dragon, such as one that's slightly obscured by the ground, or one that zones off pathways to cut enemies off into a bad position is often more valuable if you don't have a combo with it such as Graviton or Orisa's Halt. With Junkrat, a mistake I often see is people gunning for enemies immediately and feeling like they have to detonate it as soon as possible. You can be patient, as the tire ends up being a 10 second zoning tool and can buy time. Watch this clip of my entire team backing up and up beyond our spawn. Look how we're all just running. <laughs> get it! Get it! <laughs> Look how far we back Look how far we backed up. <laughs> For McCree, a big problem many players make is holding high noon in hopes someone will peek. All this does is make you a sitting duck if no one's already been caught in the first few seconds. Don't be afraid to cancel it if you see an enemy about to kill you. For May, a mistake people often make is throwing it in the air when they have Sigma or Diva. Remember that Blizzard only casts after Snowball hits the ground and activates. So if you aim it a little high, you have to account for the travel time, but if you look just straight down, it activates much quicker and lowers the chances of it being eaten. For Farah, a common mistake is barraging when already spotted by the enemy, usually by shooting and giving away your position. Obviously, if the situation calls for it, you can barrage, but if enemies know where you are, it's much easier for them to counter you. It's much better to quietly move around the airspace, barrage on an angle that can give you some cover from line of sight, and be sneaky about it. The biggest mistake with Reaper is telegraphing to the enemy team you're going to Death Blossom. If you play passive all game and then suddenly wraith into the enemy lines to close the distance, you might as well just type it to them in match chat at that point. Make yourself more unpredictable. For Soldier, the biggest mistake is playing this hero right now. But in all honesty, some soldiers have a weird obsession with dropping heal pad, popping visor, and just staying on it since it heals, even if the enemies move out of line of sight or go behind barriers. People are afraid of wasting its duration, but it's okay, you have a sprint ability. Use some of that visor's duration to move into a better position to put a few bullets in. For Sombra, her EMP is a very team-oriented ultimate, and using it without a plan ahead of time is a sure way to lose a ton of its value. You need to account for enemy supports, such as Transcendence or Sound Barrier, force it out or hit them with it, and ensure your team is ready to follow up. For Symmetra, a mistake every player makes and probably mumbles under their breath is walling a bad angle. You have to think about it two ways. Are you separating the enemy front and back line, or are you protecting your back line? Think about the angle of a fight, rotating it, and sectioning off popular fighting zones, and that can win you a lot more fights. A big mistake for Torb is dumping too many goo nodules in one place. Torbs will often activate their ult and just panic spray around in an area, overlapping a ton of it, which doesn't do more damage by the way, and not maximizing the potential area it could cover. With Tracer, I think it's a little mistake to think of Pulse Bomb as an ultimate. Think of it like a regular ability cooldown, use it when you have it as it builds really fast instead of sitting on it all game. But like all abilities, always put some thought into who you're targeting since you don't want to go for them if they have an escape ability up, for example. For Widowmaker, I'd say the biggest mistake is the timing of Infrasight. Activating your ultimate immediately upon getting it to extend your kills on the kill feed after getting two picks may look cool for the play of the game, but it's essentially a wasted cooldown. If you've already picked two off, you probably already won the fight, and the enemies are going to take 10 seconds or more to respawn and regroup, and by then, it's gone. Use your ult when you're unsure where the enemy is approaching from and to detect cheeky flankers. It's a very powerful tool for your team if you don't use it selfishly. For Ana, I'd say the biggest mistake is holding onto Nano for an offensive combo exclusively, like a Death Blossom combo. Do not be afraid to use it defensively now because of that HP heal and 50% damage reduction. It can save someone, perhaps a frontlining tank to ensure you don't lose that space and that you have a barrier to work with in tight situations. The biggest alt mistake for Batiste is his amp matrix placement. Come around the corner, I'm gonna window. Ready, ready, ready? Wait, 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 no, 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 no. three seconds. Oh, f <laughs> oh wait, wait. Huge window. Huge window. Now I play a good amount of Batiste, and anecdotally in ranked, I've noticed that alts I place ahead of me for my teammates to use often get a lot less value compared to just using it for myself. 
Sometimes enemies push past deep ant matrixes, and this is one of those ultimates that I find that using it selfishly for the double healing and damage works out better in most situations, and I put most in quotes. With Brig, a mistake players make is using it like a defensive ultimate, like Transcendence or Sound Barrier. The armor takes time to build up, and isn't instant, so using it when caught in grabs, for example, won't get much value, if any at all. So instead, you've got to use it early, just before a fight breaks out so it has time to ramp up. With Lucio, this is an easy mistake to fix, but please, do not jump before dropping the beat. All this does is increase the time before it activates, giving enemies an opportunity to interrupt it. For Mercy, I'd say a mistake when using Valkyrie is flying up immediately just because you can. Utilize the fact that you can fly omnidirectionally and fly out of line of sight while keeping the beam attached with its increased range. The mistake I find for Moira is not using Coalescence enough. This thing builds so fast that holding onto it just because you're hesitant is often less valuable than just using it and building up another one in 30 seconds. For Zenyatta, the mistake players dig themselves into is holding onto it only to counter ultimates when in reality you need to use it for yourself. For example, if you're looking to counter an enemy Genji Blade, but you're being dove by him early in a fight and about to die, you might try to do everything in your power to resist the temptation to use your ult, but then you end up dying and what happens next? Genji ults your team anyways, and they die. Sometimes they're gonna force it out of you, and that's okay. You just have to make use of those few seconds of your transcendence, and hopefully your team will be able to turn around and kill Genji before he gets to ult. And that wraps up this video. Thank you to the people who helped me film the scenes in a custom game. You know who you are. And if you want a chance to be a stand-in actor in one of my future videos, consider following my stream at twitch.tv slash carq, uh, where I play support at a reasonably high level and I sometimes film my editing and filming process and invite the viewers to be part of it. So I'll see you there. Take care. Peace.